The last chapter of Mineral Physics 1 is about heat transfer properties. First, let me talk about why the heat transfer is important in geophysics. Needless to say, the Earth's interior is essentially hot. The Earth's interior is, however, not only just hot, but the temperature varies from region to region. The high temperatures produces density variation due to the thermal expansion, and usually high temperature produces lower density. Therefore, the heterogeneous temperature distribution in the Earth's interior produces regional buoyancy, causing dynamic motion within the Earth. Dynamic motion uh, includes slab subduction, plume ascent, dynamo in the Earth outer core. In order to constate these problems, we need knowledge of the heat transfer properties of the Earth's constituents. In the section 1 of uh, chapter 5, heat transfer properties, let me talk about physics of the heat transfer rather than the physical properties. Here, let me classify the heat transfer mechanisms. There are three heat transfer mechanisms. The first one is conductive heat transfer. In, uh, if two bodies contact, the heat flows from the high temperature body to low temperature body. This is conductive heat transfer. In this uh, mechanism, the heat is transferred by propagation of atomic vibration. The atomic vibration is vigorous in high, pressure, high temperature body and feeble in low temperature body. The atomic, vigorous atomic vibration in high temperature body vibrate and excite the uh, atomic vibration in a low temperature body. The carrier particle of heat is uh, phonon in the conductive heat transfer. It is constant. The so-called uh, Fourier's law is held for the conductive heat transfer. The Fourier's law, law is written in this uh, equation, equation 5.1.1. Q, the heat flow is equal to minus K times the uh, derivative of temperature with respect to position X. And the Q is, uh, again, heat flow, which is the transferred heat per unit area and per unit time. The uh, T is temperature, again, okay, and uh, the dT over dT is temperature gradient. And uh, therefore, the Fourier's law means the heat flow is proportional to the temperature gradient. And that uh, K is uh, proportional constant referred to as the thermal conductivity. Important point is Heat uh, flow is independent from the temperature itself, but uh, uh, proportional to the temperature gradient. The second heat transfer mechanism is radiative heat transfer. As you know, high temperature body emits light, which is referred to as thermal radiation. Thermal radiation follows the Stefan Boltzmann's law, where uh, the emission, emitted energy of the light is proportional to fourth power of temperature. The uh, energy uh, radiative heat transfer is energy transfer through emitted light. The carrier particle of the radiative heat transfer is photon. The third one is convective heat transfer. In convective heat transfer, heat is transferred by movement of high temperature body. If uh, the heat transfer is completely convective, the temperature distribution follows adiabatic temperature uh, gradient. 
we have already learned the adiabatic temperature gradient in the uh, section 5 in chapter 1, adiabat. Before considering the heat transfer in the material, let us consider the radiative heat transfer in space or in vacuum. So, uh, at high temperatures, uh, thermal radiation occurs. Thermal radiation is, again, the electromagnetic wave emitted from a high temperature body, or all bodies above a zero temperature. Because the body and the space try to become in thermal equilibrium, the uh, emission of rad electromagnetic wave is uh, governed by the uh, Stefan Boltzmann's law of radiation, which is the emitted energy per uh, unit area is proportional to the temperature, fourth power of temperature. And the proportional constant is here uh, expressed using sigma, and this sigma is referred to as the Stefan Boltzmann constant, whose magnitude is 5.67 blah 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 times 10 to minus 8 kilogram per cubic uh, second per uh, Kelvin, fourth power of Kelvin. Uh, minus fourth power of Kelvin. So the total energy of an electromagnetic wave emitted from a black body is proportional to the fourth power of temperature. Then uh, let us consider the heat transfer between surface A and the surface B in parallel in the space. The temperature of the surface A is uh, expressed using Ta and surface B, Tb. The energy emitted from A and B per unit area, per unit time, is uh, expressed in these equations. The uh, Qa is equal to uh, sigma times sigma times fourth power of temperature A and the energy emitted from the uh, surface P is equal to uh, sigma Stefan Boltzmann constant times the fourth power of temperature B. Therefore, net heat flow from uh, surface A to surface B is uh, Q equal QA minus QB, which is equal to sigma times fourth power of temperature A minus sigma times fourth power of temperature B. And if temperature A and the temperature B are nearly uh, equal, then the uh, net heat flow is nearly equal to the Stefan Boltzmann constant sigma times temperature difference Ta minus Tb, which is expressed using delta T, times uh, temp average temperature TAB cubed. Therefore, heat flow is proportional to the temperature difference delta T and uh, also uh, temperature cubed. And more importantly, the heat flow is independent from the distance between two uh, surfaces. On the other hand, conductive heat transfer is uh, as we have already seen by the equal, uh, Fourier's law, the uh, heat flow is equal to minus the uh, thermal conductivity K times the temperature gradient the uh, dt over dx, which is which is nearly equal to minus K times delta t over delta x, where T is a temperature difference and X is uh, distances over two uh, points. Therefore, the conductive heat transfer is proportional to not only the temperature difference but also uh, the distance between two uh, points. Therefore, 
uh, we need a special mechanism to cause a proportionality to the uh, this in inverse proportionality uh, in uh, the conductive heat transfer. Here, let us discuss about uh, thermal diffusion. Let us consider a thin plate with thickness of delta R, a delta X, and area large S. So the left side of the plate is uh, X, and right side of the pl plate is at the coordinate X plus delta X, although uh, this figure shows a Y and Y plus delta Y. So Q x is heat flow from the left side into the plate and qx plus delta x is heat flow from the plate from uh, uh, to the right side then uh, increase in thermal energy in the plate per unit time q is equal to this area times the difference of uh, heat coming and heat outgoing. Q is heat flow, therefore this is energy per unit area and per unit time. So Q is, large Q is equal to, from this uh, uh, difference, minus S times uh, the partial derivative of heat flow Q with respect to position X at constant temperature, at temperature T times delta x, which is equal to, uh, from the Fourier's law, q equal minus k times the temperature gradient dx over dt minus delta x times uh, area s times the partial derivative of minus k times partial derivative of uh, x, uh, temperature t with respect to x, with respect to x. So there are uh, two differential two times. Therefore, this equation is uh, formula is equal to k delta x times s times the second partial derivative of temperature t with respect to x at uh, temperature t. Equation five one four. Then uh, let us consider the temperature in increase. Uh, in this uh, plate. So the temperature increasing rate at the position uh, x is uh, the partial derivative of temperature with respect to time at x, which is equal to the heat increasing rate of uh, thermal energy times uh, divided by uh, rho c times delta x s. So delta xs is a volume of the plate, delta x is a, a thickness, and s is area. And c is a specific heat per weight, and therefore the rho c, rho is a, a density, therefore rho c is specific heat per volume. Then uh, this uh, heat from the last uh, slide, equation 5.14, the increasing rate of the thermal energy Q is equal to K times delta X times S times the second partial derivative of temperature T with respect to X at temperature at time T. Then it becomes like this. Then uh, S and delta X in the uh, numerator and denominator uh, cancel each other, therefore we have uh, this equation, the uh, partial derivative of time uh, temperature T with respect to time at given plate position X is equal to kappa, parameter kappa times uh, the second partial derivative of temperature with respect to position X at time T, equation 5.1.5. And this uh, proportional uh, parameter, parameter kappa is uh, equal to the heat capacity and uh, no, thermal conductivity uh, k divided by 
low density and the heat specific heat per weight. This uh, proportional constant is referred to as thermal diffusivity. So let us argue the meaning of the uh, Fourier's law and the uh, thermal diffusion equation. So uh, let us consider the uh, heat flow and temperature change with time. The first case is a homogeneous uh, high temperature. So temper this is a temperature distribution. And uh, horizontal axis is x and vertical axis is a temperature. And temperature is uh, const uh, independent from the position uniform. Then in this case, heat flow is zero because heat flow is uh, proportional to minus heat uh, thermal conductivity times temperature gradient and even though temperature is high temperature gradient if the temperature gradient is zero heat flow is zero and uh, temperature changing rate is also zero no change of the temperature then uh, next we consider the case uh, temperature distribution is linear so temperature uh, decreases, linearly decreases with the position. In this case, heat flow occurs from the high temperature from the left side to right side. So the temperature gradient is negative, non-zero, therefore Q is positive because a minus and a um, sign here and the uh, temperature, negative temperature gradient, heat flow is positive direction, namely right side. So vertical axis is a heat flow, horizontal axis is x uh, position. And, uh, but the temperature increasing rate, vertical axis here and the position, the temperature uh, increase change is zero because uh, heat flow is uniform in this case and if we have heat flows from position here to here the same amount of heat flows from here to here therefore temperature at each point does not change then uh, again the, if the temperature distribution is linear even though there is heat flow the temperature does not change with the time. Then, if the temperature distribution is nonlinear, if the parabolic like this, then heat flow in the in this uh, segment, heat flow goes from left side to right side, and in this segment, heat flow goes from left to from right to left. So, uh, heat is accumulated in the middle uh, around here so uh, this diagram shows uh, uh, heat flow again and here heat flow is positive means the heat flow occurs from uh, left side to right side and uh, at smaller x then heat flow magnitude of heat flow is larger because the uh, uh, temperature uh, gradient is uh, steeper in this uh, uh, in the parabola case, and at this point, the heat flow is zero because the uh, temperature distribution is locally uh, flat. On the right side, uh, the temp heat flow is from right to left, like this. As a result the uh, temperature increase uh, each point and if the temperature distribution parabolic the uh, temperature increase uniformly with time so uh, the because the difference of the heat flow from the one position to neighboring position is constant in this case Therefore, temperature changing rate is constant, uh, in independent from the position. So uh, these are meaning of the 
uh, uh, Fourier's law and uh, thermal diffusion equation. So, and uh, let us consider the temperature distribution is not parabolic but uh, uh, Q expressed by a cubic function. In this case, the heat flow is uh, large in the left side to, from right to left to right and here going to zero and from here to in the right side uh, heat flow is to the left direction and magnitude increase and increasing rate in, uh, is nonlinear increase and increase in this case increasing rate of the heat flow is uh, linear with uh, a position x in this case uh, temperature changing rate incre linearly increase so here uh, uh, temperature increasing rate is uh, small here and increasing rate increases here heat flow is zero but nevertheless temperature increase uh, here because uh, heat flow from left side in the left side heat flow is uh, from left to right and in the right side heat flow is uh, right to left therefore the, uh, temperature increase in the same rate and uh, uh, the heat flow increases with uh, increasing x but uh, in this case increasing rate of the heat flow is uh, linear as a result the temperature changing rate is linear so uh, this is a uh, uh, general uh, further uh, complicated cases of the uh, temperature distribution and relations among temperature distribution heat flow and temperature changing rate and the situation real situations even more complex so uh, this is the end of the section one uh, physics of the heat transfer in the chapter five heat transfer properties